वेलकम टू द ब्रह्मास्त्र रिविजन ऑफ सी एफ फाइनल ऑडिट यस माय सी एफ प्रखनेश का नाम इज माय सेल्फ नाउ दिस इज द फर्स्ट रिविजन सेशन अंडर द न्यू सिलेबस दैट इज एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम मे ट्वेंटी फोर ऑनवर्ड्स एंड फॉर एवरी रिविजन सेशन आई बी हैविंग वन पी डी एफ सेट ऑफ पी डी एफ नोट्स विच आई बी अपलोडिंग ऑन माई मोबाइल ऐप एंड हाउ टू डाउनलोड दैट एंड स्टफ इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस वीडियो सो यू कैन ऑब्वियसली सी इट फ्रॉम देर ऑन द टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑल्सो आई गिवन द इंस्ट्रक्शंस obviously i'm not going because this is revision session and so obviously when you're looking at this video you are little bit worried about your timely preparation so i'm not going to waste you know a lot of time in my introduction and stuff uh, i'm in the 10th year of my coaching experience so that is fair enough for you to understand that uh, you know why you should rely on these particular sessions and my results speak for for itself you know for themselves now these revision sessions are this particular videos that you are seeing are in 100% english uh, keeping special focus on south india students all right so that Uh, they are comfortable in revising the audit subject okay now <coughs> so straight away coming to the point when it comes to ca final audit you are very well aware that there are 11 chapters of standards and 8 chapters of non standards and in the 11 chapters of standards you have 46 standards all right and this particular pdf this particular session will cover four very sensitive standards and i am completing this first so that in other uh, revision sessions when i take reference of these standards you are able to understand that is the sequence of teaching now these four standards are dealing with audit report ss700 ss701 ss705 and ss706 these four standards when they come together that is nothing but your entire entire audit report these four standards in the module they have been clubbed and they have been given under chapter number 7 all right chapter 7 contains more standards of 700 series and also some sections from company companies act 2013 but primarily in this particular session i am focusing on four standards that is 700 701 705 and 706 now if you see the first page of these notes it is all a set of important points to be covered i have given it you know it's like an index which will help you to understand that what we are going to cover again i it is in my handwritten style and i understand my handwriting is not that great but i hope it is at least legible when you see it on your mobile or on your laptop <coughs> and i have done it in my handwritten style so that i can cover maximum points all right over here and when i write notes on my own i know uh, then then it creates the best version of myself that is the reason it is over here uh, but don't worry i'll be reading these notes in the video so that you are able to understand the words if you are not able to read them now the important concepts to be covered this is the whole index 700 701 705 and 706 but my style of teaching is little different first i will cover the concept of audit opinion see at the end of the day i am going to teach whatever is included in the audit report so obviously audit opinion our opinion on the financial statements followed after audit opinion will be discussing about emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph after that we'll be discussing about key audit matters and after that i will be giving you a complete summary of all the matters in the audit report all right all the matters in the audit report and we'll also be discussing about the audit report format and some really really critical special adjustments which are there in the audit report okay now <clears throat> coming straight away to the point over here the very first discussion is audit opinion so you are a ca final student so at least you have heard that there is something called as qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion all right there is something like that can you just tell me what is a qualified opinion no no i don't want to know the complete module english qualified opinion means that financial statements are showing a true and fair view except for the following so largely financial statements are showing a true and fair view but there are some reservations adverse opinion means financial statements do not show a true and fair view and disclaimer of opinion means we are unable to form an opinion so the situation is such that we are not in a position to form an opinion one more time qualified opinion financial statements show a true and fair view except for the following adverse opinion fine we are confident that financial statements do not show a true and fair view and disclaimer of opinion that we are unable to form an opinion these three opinions are called as modified opinion modification to the opinion and this concept is covered in ss705 now the whole game is you know when you look at final ca papers the whole game is that when exactly we should give which opinion so at what point of time are we supposed to give qualified opinion and what point of time are we supposed to give adverse opinion and at what point of time are we supposed to give disclaimer of opinion under which circumstances and for that this chart is going to help you let me tell you whenever we are learning any concept of audit report there are three things that you should have in your mind first is you should be clear with the concept second 
you should have you should have some example running at the back of your mind so when you think about those examples you can derive the theory and third and the most important thing is the drafting because in final year paper they will for sure ask you to draft the audit report also i repeat you should be very clear with three things concept examples drafting come on say it with me concept examples drafting and all these three things combined together i am going to cover it in this particular chart so whenever there is a question on audit opinion i repeat <coughs> whenever there is a question on audit opinion the first thing that you will analyze is whether sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is available or sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available you know when you look at the question this is the first thing that you are going to analyze for example no 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 don't don't read the chart for that first look at me for example if i tell you that auditor has concluded that there is an overvaluation of inventory and inventory is 4 percentage of total assets now forget about which opinion but one thing is very clear that sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is available after you conclude that okay evidence is available at least auditor has obtained the evidence then you need to evaluate the effect of uncorrected misstatements misstatements means acpd goes wrong what is acpd amount classification presentation disclosure if acpd goes wrong all right then we say that there is a mistake now whenever there are misstatements we are not just worried about misstatements we are worried about uncorrected misstatements if the management is not rectifying it and whatever they are not rectifying if it is immaterial then we give a clean opinion that financial statements are showing a true and fair view however if it is material sir how we will come to know are focus on my case na let us say that so i said focus on my example if inventory is overvalued all right if i say it is 4 percentage of total assets obviously the thing is very clear that it is material you don't need you don't need some angel to tell you that this is material you will feel it from the question itself but now the most important thing comes over here see whenever a person falls sick it could be malaria it could be cancer it could be anything i understand that the person is sick but what is the level of his sickness that is where finance say students get caught everyone over here so if inventory is overvalued and if it is 4 percentage of total assets obviously it is material but this is not cancer this is malaria this is material but not pervasive i repeat this is material but not pervasive what do you understand by pervasive pervasive means something that covers a substantial part of the financial statements for example if you are conducting audit of a coaching class and if admissions of the students are wrongly recorded in a coaching class when admission data itself is wrong then obviously it is material and pervasive so when the effect of uncorrected misstatements is material <coughs> the next thing that you should be able to understand from the question is whether it is material but not pervasive or material and pervasive <coughs> if it is material but not pervasive then you are going to say financial statements show a true and fair view except for the following and that is nothing but qualified opinion if it is material and pervasive that means in a coaching class company let us say if the admissions data itself is wrong then the entire financial statement goes wrong then you are going to say financial statements do not show a true and fair view that is nothing but adverse opinion let me tell you that this much <coughs> this much is very simple at ca final level students are very comfortable with this explanation however if i talk about past examination questions in november 22 there was this question that auditor has concluded auditor has concluded that related party transactions are incorrect i repeat auditor has concluded that related party transactions are materially misstated now when related party transactions are materially misstated we can understand that there is some misstatement we can understand auditor has obtained evidence we can also understand that it is material but when related party transactions are materially misstated we cannot understand anything further we can understand that it is material but we are not able to conclude whether it is pervasive or not we understand that the person is sick but we are not under able to understand whether it is malaria or cancer so what i am trying to say please focus over here that if the question is silent on pervasiveness see question will never be silent on materiality material or immaterial that much you will come to know but if the question is silent on pervasiveness whether it is malaria or cancer then in that case first option will be either qualified or adverse opinion if the question forces us to select 
then we will go with a qualified opinion. Follow this and you will never go wrong in ICI exams. This is my 10 years of experience. So first option, either qualified or adverse opinion. If the question forces us to select, then we will settle down with a qualified opinion. And I said that this happened in November 22 paper. All right. So this is how you are going to understand things over here. I hope I'm very clear. If the effect of uncorrected misstatement is immaterial, then obviously you are going to go with a clean opinion. <coughs> so I hope that this thing is very clear. Now, now please be please pl please be more focused because we are going to get into some sensitive discussions. If sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available, when I use the word LOSA, that means limitation on scope of audit. That means auditor has tried everything, but still evidence is not available. So after this, there is no discussion of audit procedures. When I say LOSA, means the conclusion is final that evidence is not available. Then in that case, I need this English. When evidence is not available, you are not in a position to exactly analyze the effect of misstatement because you don't have the calculations, exact calculations. But what you can do is you can analyze what can possibly go wrong over here. So we need to project what can be the possible effect of undetected misstatements. Now tell me everyone, practical, practical, because questions are going to be very practical. If inventory is 4% of total assets, you wanted to do physical verification of inventory, but due to war-like situation, you could not go over there because India, China armies are you know, standing against each other and the go-down is somewhere in that particular war zone itself. You tried video call and stuff, but you know, during war zone, it is not possible to you know connect with video calls and stuff also. You tried obtaining some statements, but you are not able to position to establish the communication with the department over there. So, you tried your level best. You tried your level best. And it's not like management is not cooperating when they are cooperating. But at the end of the day, evidence is not available. Listen to me. This is called as limitation on scope of audit due to circumstances. You will have to analyze the question nicely. Huh? And you will come to know why I am asking you to do that. But let us say if management is not allowing you to enter the go down itself. If management, management is not allowing you to enter the storage location itself. And they don't have any valid reasons for that. They are just not allowing you to verify. Then in that case, we call it as limitation on scope of audit created by management and those charged with governance. So listen to me very carefully. Whenever there is a LOSA, LOSA can be due to two reasons. Either LOSA due to circumstances or it could be LOSA created by management and those charged with governance. What will be the impact on opinion? See, if the possible effect of undetected misstatement, if inventory is just 4% of total assets, then if possible effect of undetected misstatement is material but not pervasive, we will stick to qualified opinion. However, when sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available and the possible effect of undetected misstatement turns out to be material and pervasive, imagine in a coaching class company, the coaching class owner is not ready to share the details of admission receipts with you. Then in that case, can I say that the possible effect is material and pervasive? Now the owner is not sharing the data with you. This is a LOSA created by management and those charged with governance. Or it is possible that the owner is, owner is ready to share the data but is not able to share because there was a fire in his premises. And in that, every single document got lost, destroyed due to fire. So that is a limitation of scope of audit due to circumstances. If the possible effect of undetected misstatement is material and pervasive, and this adjustment is there in the new syllabus module, and if it is a LOSA due to circumstances, then just end up with a disclaimer of an opinion that we are unable to form an opinion. However, if possible effect of undetected misstatement is material and pervasive, and it is a LOSA imposed by management and those charged with governance. Then in that case, look at this very sensitive. First, you need to check, is withdrawal possible? Is it possible to withdraw from the engagement? Because these people are creating LOSA and that also material and pervasive. Yes, then withdraw from the engagement. No, if withdrawal is not possible, then you go to disclaimer of an opinion. So I repeat, if there is a low sub created by management and those charged with governance and if the possible effect is material and pervasive, first they are asking you to decide whether it is possible to withdraw from the engagement. Yes, then withdraw. 
no then you give disclaimer of an opinion sir madam i have just given semi circular reference over here uh it is not a part of 700 to 706 but it is given in chapter number 7 so if you want to prepare it after this lecture is over you can do it right so semi circular on resignation which is a very sensitive circular uh, you will find some revision lecture here and there on semi circular also on my channel but what i want to say is that why that circular becomes uh, sensitive because in case of listed entities there are some restrictions on withdrawal right so i've just connected it over here so boss this is how you are going to analyze when sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available losa material but not pervasive qualified material and pervasive if it is losa due to circumstances then disclaimer but if it is losa imposed by management and dcwg then think about withdrawal if withdrawal is possible yes withdraw from the engagement if it is not possible then disclaimer of an opinion and i have just written the english of disclaimer that we are unable to form an opinion but listen to me listen to me very carefully what happened in december 21 paper what happened in december 21 paper in december 21 paper they gave a case study where company has given loan to someone in december 21 paper they gave a case study where company has given a loan to someone and company is not able to produce the evidence in front of you nature of the company was not given total asset figure was not given a turnover figure was not given so we un we understood that it is something material but we were not in a position to understand whether it is pervasive or not so if the question is silent on pervasiveness then the first option is either qualified or disclaimer when evidence is not available question is silent on pervasiveness the first option is either qualified or disclaimer however if the question forces us to select then you will settle down with a qualified opinion and you can check in the december 21 suggested answers that they had settled with a qualified opinion over there because the question wanted you to choose one opinion i hope i have made myself very very clear yes 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 okay now when we talk about audit report now listen to me this full chart exactly tells you what you are supposed to do in exams you are going to lick this chart pardon my language but you are going to lick this chart okay and you are going to follow this chart properly in order to give answers in your exams now listen to me when we look at sa 705 modification to the opinion what are other points given in the module they want you to write something on basis for modified opinion paragraph you know there is this audit report in audit report you have opinion paragraph and after opinion paragraph we have this basis for opinion paragraph yes okay in that basis for opinion paragraph what will be the content what you are going to write over there why katappa killed bahubali no na what will be the content either there is inability to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence or there is some material misstatement now listen to me very carefully this can be a four marks question material misstatement could be in relation to amount classification presentation or disclosure if it is in relation to amount classification presentation let us say some amount has gone wrong some classification presentation has gone wrong then institute expects that you please explain that properly in your basis for modified opinion paragraph explain the misstatement and include the quantification that how much amount has gone wrong to the extent it is practicable when it comes to disclosures notes to accounts notes to accounts disclosures if it is an incorrect disclosure then explain that what went wrong okay however there is going to be a big adjustment over here please listen to me let us say management has four related parties and management is not ready to write it in the notes to accounts you know as per india s24 management has to give a list of related parties in the notes to accounts so management has omitted i repeat management has omitted that so you have obtained the evidence you understood that they have omitted so it obviously it is a material misstatement so either qualified or adverse opinion all of that is fine it's not that they are not sharing the data with you but they have shared the data but at the end they have omitted the notes to accounts then in that case you are expected to include the omitted disclosures unless prohibited by laws and regulations so you are expected to write it in the basis for modified opinion the names of those four related parties and include that particular notes to account i hope i made myself very very clear this can be a very big adjustment okay now listen to me what else is given in sa705 when it comes to the module see when you give a disclaimer of an opinion so that's a very sensitive situation 
so when you give a disclaimer of an opinion there are some changes in the audit report now what are those changes what exactly are those changes that you will understand right? after some time i am going to cover it under sa 700 in my note of special adjustments okay so relax now listen to me if you are done with these notes if you are the audit academy my student then in that case you can refer our question bank and your things are done but if you are my student from old course all right and looking at this new course revision lectures then it is important and you don't have my new book and stuff then it is important that along with the old course question bank you cover the new course module 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 question bank if you are my student of new course then just cover our question bank if you are not my student then after this chart all right you just have to go to the module just have a glance at that okay and cover the questions of the module especially in the module you have to read the drafting how they have drafted qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion how they have drafted that you do this much it's done it's dusted you can never go wrong in the opinion part now all right okay so that is it for ss705 now we are talking about ss706 emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph as per sa706 boss first of all emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph there are additional disclosures in audit report whenever auditor feels like highlighting something which may not necessarily impact his opinion but he still wants to write about it then these two paragraphs will help the auditor emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph now emphasis of matter paragraph is used whenever you want to explain something from the financial statements that is why i call emphasis of matter paragraph in the shortest possible explanation i call it as an accounting clarification other matter paragraph i really don't like the title of other matter you know some titles of the movies also i hate kisi ka bhai kisi ki jaan what is this ha huh? teri baaton mein aise uljha diya what is this what is the very meaning of the title when you look at other matter paragraph sorry i could not translate the title in english so other matter paragraph the title is worst when you look at the title you feel like you can include anything and everything in other matter no 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 other matter paragraph is specifically when you want to explain something on audit so it is an auditing clarification let me give you examples for example you are conducting audit of x limited and in x limited there are some changes in accounting policies you have verified the acpd amount classification presentation disclosure everything is perfect but because the accounting policy has changed you feel like giving a clarification for that then that is an accounting clarification you include it in emphasis of matter paragraph let us say you are conducting audit of x limited let us say you are the holding company auditor and x limited has 10 subsidiaries right then in that case obviously you would have used the work performed by the subsidiary company auditor also at some or the other stage and you just want to write a reference of that work in your audit report then this particular reference you are not writing to explain something from the financial statements you are writing to explain your audit so whenever you want to explain something on auditing clarification then other matter paragraph will come into picture am i clear with this yes or no sir yes sir but only this much knowledge is not enough because when you want to write it in the exams you will need theory so over here here i have given emphasis of matter paragraph theory and here i have given other matter paragraph theory so a matter for emphasis of matter paragraph what is the shortest explanation accounting clarification so now now look at this for emphasis of matter paragraph there are four conditions first it must be a matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements second on that particular matter you should not have a modified opinion i repeat on that particular matter you should not have a modified opinion so in my example of changes in accounting policies let us say if the acpd is wrong then to there will be a qualified or adverse opinion yaar yes so on that particular matter you should not have a modified opinion only then it will get into emphasis of matter and boss you should feel that that matter is little important matter it is fundamental to the users understanding of the financial statements one more time how many conditions four conditions what are the first three conditions it is a matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements second provided auditor does not have a modified opinion on such matter third provided it is fundamental to the users understanding of the financial statements three conditions i hope you all have understood fourth condition for the next 5 minutes just by heart it after 5 minutes you will understand but as of now just by heart it temporarily just by heart it provided it is not a key audit matter as per sa701 so one more time if you want to go to emphasis of matter paragraph if you want to go to emphasis of matter paragraph there are four conditions come on come with me 
it should be a matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements provided on such matter you should not have a modified opinion provided that the matter should be fundamental to the user's understanding of the financial statements provided it is not a key audit matter as per as 701 for other matter paragraph first of all it is a matter other than the matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements auditing clarification so matter other than the matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements secondly you should feel that this disclosure is important in the audit report so that i can make people understand audit in a better manner look at this english provided such matter is important for better understanding of the audit that has been performed all right provided such matter is important for better understanding of the audit that has been performed provided such disclosure is not prohibited by applicable law only then you can write and provided it is not a key audit matter as per sa 701 only then you can write it in other matter paragraph actually i got distracted with one or two chat box but i am very happy that you put that message i i am very happy that you have put up that message some students are typing that they are confused between key audit matter emphasis matter other matter it is pragnesh's promise wait for next 10 minutes and all the confusion will go away all right very good but everyone over here for other matter give me four conditions come on four conditions it is a matter other than the matter presented or disclosed in the financial statements second provided such matter is important for the better understanding of the audit that has been performed third such disclosure should not be prohibited by laws and regulations hey don't worry about this line laws and regulations that they keep on writing in between and fourth condition it should not be a key audit matter as per sa 701 when all of these four conditions are satisfied only then you will use other matter paragraph so in short to solve mcqs emphasis of matter is accounting clarification and other matter is auditing clarification but when you are writing in your brief answers you should be able to write all the conditions i want a confirmation give me a promise that you will be able to write these conditions yes or no sir yes sir all right now when it comes to emphasis of matter paragraph listen to me very carefully accounting clarification in module they have given one question please mention the circumstances where emphasis of matter paragraph becomes necessary see normally depends on my judgment whether i want to use it or not but there are three essays from the entire set of 38 essays the first 38 essays there are three essays where emphasis of matter paragraph becomes necessary that you will feel when i revise those essays right so as of now i have just written the number of those essays but you will feel this when i actually revise those essays essay 210 essay 516 essay 800 as of now just remember these three numbers in these three essays you will see that compulsorily we will use an emphasis of matter paragraph then i have also given the references of essays where other matter paragraph is used so that when you look at this one page you will get all the information at once but obviously you can understand this only if you know these essays so for that you will have to wait for my other revision sessions right okay i told you for any concept there are three things for any audit report concept there are three things that you should be aware of the the concept the meaning some examples in your mind and then the drafting now when it comes to emphasis of matter paragraph drafting obviously it is an accounting clarification so when we are drafting it we need to write it with reference to note number so and so of the financial statements so in emphasis of matter paragraph we will provide reference to the disclosures in the financial statements and we want to tell the shareholders hello shareholder do not increase your blood pressure relax emphasis of matter paragraph is just an additional disclosure our opinion is not modified with respect to such matter our opinion is not modified with respect to such matter and for other matter institute says then either you can use the heading other matter or you can use any other heading and then there are no further strict rules for drafting all right okay so emphasis of matter and other matter we have understood the concept we have understood the examples we also understood the drafting but there was one line in emphasis of matter other matter that you can write emphasis of matter other matter only if it is not a key audit matter now bloody how to decide this listen to me very carefully when you look at the audit report of reliance industries limited i repeat when you look at the audit report of reliance industries limited estimation of oil and gas reserves jamnagar oil refinery hello estimation of oil and gas reserves is explained in their notes to accounts but when you open that particular audit report 
when you open that particular audit report you will see that estimation of oil and gas reserves has been explained in key audit matter even though it is an accounting clarification still it is explained in key audit matter why 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 for that please wait for the next 5 7 minutes everyone over here key audit matter as per sa 701 first of all the concept of key audit matter is mandatory only in case of audit of listed entities i repeat the concept of key audit matter is mandatory only in audit of listed entities in future if it becomes mandatory for other entities as required by law then you will have to follow it so we just write this line because it is given in sa but it has no impact practically because as of now it is mandatory only for listed entities so audit of such entities where it is prescribed by law voluntarily as a voluntarily auditor can apply in case of unlisted entities also but my request that in exams apply this concept only in case of listed entities voluntarily don't try to overact in any other question now what exactly is key audit matter key audit matters first of all are the matters selected from matters communicated with those charged with governance imagine a listed entity in that we have board of directors audit committee and stuff so with board of directors audit committee whatever matters you have communicated from those matters only you can select the key audit matters so key audit matters first of all are selected from matters communicated with matters uh, matters communicated with those charged with governance and the most important line for key audit matters you can never forget this key audit matters are matters of utmost significance in the audit of financial statements of the current period as per auditor's professional judgment one more time key audit matters are such matters which are matters of utmost significance in the audit of financial statements of the current period as per auditor's professional judgment and experience you know half of the students why they are not able to clear audit because of this word professional judgment and experience why do you score good marks in costing accounts fm taxation and not in audit because in costing accounts fm taxation you have clear set of rules whereas in audit lots of things depend upon professional judgment and experience and that is the reason that you should discuss with the professor everyone over here now in exams how you will decide which matter is a matter of utmost significance how you will apply that judgment don't worry in sa 701 they have given certain factors determining key audit matters i repeat in sa 701 they have given certain factors determining key audit matters and these factors will practically help you to decide and this is where pragnester comes into picture so factors determining key audit matters the code word is significant reet r w e t reet significant r r for risks so if the question says that auditor has concluded that this is a significant risk area then obviously it is a key audit matter but what if the question is silent how to decide which risk is significant risk don't worry examples of significant risk have been given in sa 315 so i have even seen that essay from that essay the examples are fraud oscar total 1 2 3 4 5 6 i will come to those examples but one thing we are clear now that from these six examples if there is any question then obviously it can be a key audit matter second significant e e for estimates with high uncertainty estimates with high uncertainty has always been a key audit matter now tell me everyone what do you understand by estimates of with high uncertainty where the outcome can be materially different from your prediction imagine you are the cfo of reliance industries limited the cfo of reliance industries limited provision entry for routine expenses provision for routine expenses is so simple it is so predictable that even your junior accounts clerk can pass that entry because routine expenses are predictable provision entry but when it comes to estimation of oil and gas reserves can i say that what you are predicting and what what is the outcome can i say it can be materially different yes or no sir yes so it is an estimate with high uncertainty so reliance auditor thought that because it is an estimate with high uncertainty we will write about that in key audit matters and that is why estimation of oil and gas reserves is included in key audit matters in the reliance industries limited audit report are you with me yes or no sir yes sir all right then over here significant events and transactions that occur during the period under audit so r risk e for estimates e for events t for transactions read sir can you give examples of significant events and transactions maybe acquisition and stuff all right but listen to me very carefully 
significant event and transaction they will give it to you in the question don't worry about it that this is a significant event or transaction these two things we will have to analyze so significant estimates with high uncertainty i made you feel that but examples are also there in sa540 and significant risk areas are fraud oscar areas which are there in sa315 look at this fraud oscar if in exams they tell you that this is a risk of fraud or if you feel that there is a transaction outside the normal course of business manufacturing entity giving loans all right outside the normal course of business s for subjectivity which is covered over here that is why i did not write it over here so f for fraud o for outside the normal course of business s for subjectivity was covered over here c for complex transaction acquisition and stuff complex transaction a for accounting and economic developments like let us say uh, lots of amendments in gst and stuff economic developments or new set of indas all right or first time adoption of indas right? related party transactions obviously related party transactions is an area of significant risk if you can ask adani enterprises they will tell you so listen to me very very carefully significant reit helps you to understand whether something <coughs> should be written in key audit matter or not now why i am teaching in this particular sequence first i talked about qualified adverse and disclaimer of opinion then i am talking about emphasis of matter other matter background and then i took the discussion of key audit matters why this particular sequence so that i can compare key audit matters with other paragraphs so that i can compare key audit matters with other paragraphs all right now listen to me very very carefully imagine you are conducting audit of reliance industries limited inventory is 4 percentage of total assets and let us say inventory is overvalued reliance industries limited inventory is 4 percentage of total assets and let us say inventory is overvalued obviously you had a discussion with the cfo you had a discussion with the audit committee board of directors no one is ready to rectify the financials and that is why you gave a qualified opinion fine fine but don't forget that this is also a matter of utmost significance that is why it is leading to a modified opinion and that is the reason listen to me very carefully now if you have given a qualified or adverse opinion if you have given a qualified or adverse opinion then in such audit report you will write qualified adverse opinion below that you will give basis for qualified adverse opinion but in key audit matter see you can't ignore that this is also a key audit matter this has been communicated with those charged with governance and it is a matter of utmost significance also and that is the reason that in key audit matter you will give a reference to this particular paragraph how it is written listen to me listen to my english how it is written in addition to the matters explained in basis for qualified or adverse opinion paragraph following are other key audit matters all right but listen to me very carefully if you have given disclaimer of an opinion okay then in that case institute says that in such audit report there will be no key audit matters you have to by heart this if you have given disclaimer of an opinion even if you are conducting audit of listed entity still there will be no key audit matters but when it comes to key audit matter versus emphasis of matter other matter paragraph in simple english key audit matter will have a preference over emphasis of matter other matter paragraph first priority you have to give to key audit matter only if it is not a key audit matter then you will go to emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph if a matter is not a key audit matter then if it is an accounting matter emphasis of matter paragraph if it is auditing matter then other matter paragraph so how you will understand whether a matter is key audit matter or not who will help you who will help you significant reet will help you I want a confirmation. Are you understanding this now? Yes or no, sir? Yes, sir. Now listen to me. Drafting key audit matters. So in your audit report, you will have the heading key audit matters. In that, you know, one one or two lines we write it as an introduction. That key audit matters are the matters which are of what most significance in the audit of financial statements of the current period. The key audit matters are selected from the matters communicated with those charged with governance. So we give a little bit of meaning. then we give them some clarification that don't expect too much from me expectations will hurt see if reliance auditor is writing about estimation of oil and gas reserves that does not mean that he has audited oil and gas separately he was there to audit financial statements in that one of the item was oil and gas reserves 
so auditor does not provide a separate opinion on these matters you know we give them a clarification to limit our liability then for each key audit matter we are supposed to give a heading like estimation of oil and gas reserves then we are supposed to explain raw where this particular item can be found in the notes to account so reference to the notes to accounts then a for audit procedures that we have performed and w for why it is a significant matter these many things we need to explain in the drafting of key audit matter paragraph i hope i am clear with this over here now listen key audit matter itself is not a substitute for disclosures in the financial statements here come on if i am explaining something about estimation of oil and gas reserves in key audit matter that does not mean that management can start deleting their notes to accounts right so key audit matter is not a substitute for disclosures in the financial statements key audit matter is not a substitute for qualified or adverse opinion it is not a substitute for modified opinion if there is a modified opinion you will write it in modified opinion paragraph only just that over here we give them a reference that's it and now listen to me very carefully for the students who have at least studied the subject once will be able to understand and if you have not studied once still wait i'll be able to connect if if there is a material uncertainty over going concern which has been properly explained by the management in the notes to accounts then there is a separate dedicated paragraph for that and that is called as material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph so key audit matter is not a substitute for three things disclosures in the financial statements second it is not a substitute for modified opinion third it is not a substitute for material uncertainty related to going concern as of now please by heart this material uncertainty related to going concern but if you are you know uh, if you are not able to understand don't worry sa 570 revision session will cover it all right but still if some students need an immediate reference then what i have done after the concept of key audit matter i have just copy pasted my notes of going concern assumption over here all right so whenever there is a material uncertainty if management provides adequate disclosures we have to write it in material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph key audit matter cannot substitute material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph i have explained it over here but this same chart i will revise in sa 570 revision session all right so one more time key audit matter is not a substitute for disclosures in the financials it is not a substitute for modified opinion and it is not a substitute for material uncertainty related to going concern and key audit matter is not a separate opinion on individual matters i repeat key audit matter is not a separate opinion on individual matters now listen to me very carefully let us say you are conducting audit of a listed entity and let us say that there is some judicial investigation by sebi officers and sebi has given you a written order that till the time this judicial investigation is completed no one will talk about this in the public domain that means there is a legal restriction if there is a legal restriction even though you feel that it is a key audit matter but can you write it no sir so come on students naturally will understand that there is one exception that is legal prohibition and i have written this also for example sebi has prohibited from disclosing a matter which is under judicial investigation now this particular exception there is one more exception this has never been asked in exams and i really don't think that they will ask this because this is very technical still i will explain it in simple words see when you are going to communicate about something you should be confident that it will lead to understanding and not misunderstanding so if you feel that the matter is still half known half complete then half knowledge is dangerous boss if you think that adverse consequences of communicating key audit matter will be more than the beneficial value of the information then you will not communicate that in key audit matter that will be an exception that means you are not going to communicate in key audit matter but don't worry this you know cannot be really set as a proper question even if they set it they will give you this hint that adverse consequences are more than the beneficial value of the information then in that case you can decide not to communicate in key audit matter in fact not to communicate that matter anywhere in the audit report so these many points for key audit matters can we go to the index of this particular pdf important concepts to be covered 701 meaning applicability of key audit matter factors to be considered drafting comparing with other paragraphs key audit matter is not a substitute for an exceptions 
705 qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion content for basis of qualified adverse disclaimer and when there is a limitation on scope of audit what to do 706 emphasis of matter paragraph examples and drafting other matter paragraph examples and drafting these many things my ca final student should be very clear about all right now only one essay is pending that is essay 700 now when we talk about essay 700 i repeat when we talk about essay 700 forming an opinion on the financial statements there is this audit report format that they have given okay which obviously is very sensitive but in addition to that they have given some special adjustments in the audit report those special adjustments are super sensitive all right so listen to me very carefully when it comes to audit report format See, final CA students are generally aware about audit report format. So, I don't want to waste too much time on that. Okay. But I will give you the important points. So, this particular page of the module or even if you look at my textbook also it is there. This particular page of the module gives you exactly how the audit report looks like. So, first there is a title, address, see, then opinion, basis for opinion, going concern, key audit matter. Achha, this going concern you will understand in SA 570 revision. This other information paragraph you will understand in SA 720 revision. Then there is this responsibilities for the financial statements. Then there is auditor's responsibilities for audit of financial statements. This is management responsibility. This is auditor's responsibility. Then uh, some statutory reporting requirements. Then signature, place and date. Okay. But let me tell you that what are the most sensitive areas that you should be aware of. Everyone over here. In this particular chart, summary of various matters in audit report. In this particular chart, I have given the whole thinking, you know, that how a student is supposed to think, okay, when it comes to audit report. When it comes to audit report, there are mostly three important discussions in the audit report. First, just imagine the whole audit report format. So, in many paragraphs, we keep on discussing about financial statements, balance sheet, PNL, all right, and all of that. Opinion paragraph, emphasis of matter, and stuff. Okay. Then, other matter and stuff, we keep on discussing about audit procedures, responsibilities of auditor. And then, how can we forget laws and in-laws? In Companies Act, there are two sections, section 143, subsection 1, and section 143, subsection 3, which are given in your chapter number 7, at the end, after the whole essay discussion is over. Those sections ask some questions to the auditor and auditor is supposed to comment upon those sections and that is called as statutory reporting requirements, which is prescribed by law. So, in audit report, we talk about accounts, we talk about audit, we talk about law. One more time. In audit report, we talk about accounts, we talk about audit, we talk about law. Now, whatever are the matters which are prescribed by law upon which auditor needs to comment? For that, there is a separate paragraph. And the name of that paragraph is report on other legal and regulatory requirements paragraph. That exactly is what they had given over here. Other reporting responsibility. Matters prescribed by law. So you don't have to buy hard that paragraph. Huh? But those sections, obviously, you should know though about those sections. Now, whenever we are writing about audit, you know, like we have used the work of previous auditor or we have used the work of uh, subsidiary auditor or we want to talk about our audit procedures, auditor's responsibilities. Let me tell you that there is one paragraph called as auditor's responsibility paragraph. But in that auditor's responsibility paragraph, there are only nine points. And those nine points you can't edit. That is the reason that they have included other matter and stuff for additional clarification. See, this chart, if you think as per this chart, no one can defeat you in exams. So when it comes to audit procedures, scope and responsibilities, Basic responsibilities are explained in auditor's responsibility paragraph. For additional clarifications, we have to check whether SA 701 is applicable. Yes. Oh. 701 key audit matters. Is it a matter of utmost significance? Read. Yes. Then key audit matter. However, if SA 701 is not applicable, no, 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 no. And you want to write about audit and it is not getting covered in auditor's responsibility paragraph. Then there is only one paragraph left now, other matter paragraph, yes or no, sir, come on. Are you getting the chart? How you are supposed to read the chart? Yes. Yes, one more time. So if it is about auditor's responsibilities, basic responsibilities are explained in auditor's responsibility paragraph. For additional clarifications, first check whether it is a key audit matter or not. 
If it is not a key audit matter, then it will get into other matter paragraph. This is how you are supposed to read the chart. All right. So, my dear friends, listen to me. You should be very well aware about that what is covered in auditor's responsibility paragraph. These nine points of auditor's responsibility paragraph. Which is given over here in the module, in the new syllabus module 7.12. Nine points of auditor's responsibility paragraph. Just read them once. Don't buy heart. But at least you should know what goes. Acha, you know what is the best time of reading these points? After all essays are over. Because it is a summary of different, different essays only. Okay. So these nine points. Now listen to me very carefully. There are three ways of presenting auditor's responsibility paragraph. One is that you mention it within the auditor's report itself. It is given on 7.16 location of auditor's responsibility. One is you write it within the audit report itself. Second way of presenting it is that you give it as an annexure. So this is your main report and then there is an annexure. You give it as an annexure. Third way is if you are conducting audit of an entity which is heavily regulated by government laws and stuff. And let us say Comptroller Auditor General of India. Let us say CAG of India has given your responsibility somewhere on some website circular. Then you can give a reference to that particular website also. This has been one of their favorite questions in exam. There are three ways of presenting auditor's responsibility. One is within the body of auditor's report. Second is you give it as an annexure. And third you give a reference all right, to auditor's. Uh, so you give a reference to the website where auditor's responsibilities are found. Understood? Okay. So this auditor's responsibility paragraph, I want you to read once. And most importantly, you should know the location wala part. And whatever is not covered in auditor's responsibility, but you still want to write about audit, 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 audit. Then first check whether it is a key audit matter. No, then you can go into other matter paragraph. Now bang on, you have understood what I am trying to say. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. However, let us say if the matters are related to the matters presented or disclosed in the financial statement. So you want to talk about transactions, balances, disclosures, accounts. All right. Then the first thing is clear your opinion. Whether sufficient and appropriate audit evidence has been obtained or not obtained. Not obtained, then qualified or disclaimer of opinion. If it is obtained and if ACPD amount classification presentation disclosure, if it is wrong, then qualified or adverse opinion. However, if ACPD is correct and you still want to write it, like come on, come on, rapid fire round, like changes in accounting policies, ACPD is correct, you want to write it, let us say it is unlisted entity, so no key audit matters, then you write it in, which paragraph, which paragraph, emphasis of matter. But if it is a listed entity and if it is, if it gets set, if it is, uh, you know, satisfying read, then you will write it in, key audit matters. However, if it is related to material uncertainty over going concern, then you will write it in Murg, Murg, Murg paragraph. Material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph, yes or no, sir? Yes, sir. But see, I don't want you to think like that. You see these three stars? I have given you a systematic chart. So if sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is available, ACPD, everything is correct. There will be no impact on audit opinion. Then ask yourself, is it related to Murg? Yes. Then write in Murg paragraph. No. That means let us say changes in accounting policies or so. Is SA701 applicable? Key audit matter? Yes. Is it wreath? Satisfying wreath? Significant wreath? Yes. Then key audit matter? Otherwise, you get into emphasis of matter paragraph. So you have to just lick this chart. You have to paste everywhere on all the possible wall space that you have. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And if you write it on your own, nothing better than that. So, when it comes to audit report format, broadly you should know this chart and listen to me. And you should know this opinion paragraph. Sir, in opinion paragraph, first we always write some introduction and then we write our opinion, whatever is our opinion. In that introduction, we tell them that uh, we have audited financial statements of so-and-so entity for so-and-so period consisting of balance sheet, p &L, cash flow, notes to accounts and all of that. Okay, So this is written in the introduction part. And then we give our opinion. Now listen to me. 
देन यू हैव दिस बेसिस फॉर ओपिनियन ओके बेसिस फॉर ओपिनियन में वी गिव रेफरेंस टू स्टैंडर्ड्स इन ऑडिटिंग we give reference to auditors responsibility paragraph we give reference to code of ethics issued by the ici all right then we tell them that evidence available with us is sufficient and appropriate so even this paragraph is important you should read it once properly okay acha when you are reading opinion paragraph in over here there is some discussion of the concept of fair presentation framework compliance framework if you are not able to understand that concept then in that case you can go to my youtube channel type applicable financial reporting framework concept concept of afrf and you will get a detailed explanation of what is fair presentation framework compliance framework but that is a different discussion so i am not covering it in audit report chapter okay okay so opinion paragraph and basis for opinion auditor's responsibility this much at least you should be aware of okay now listen to me the last part of sa 700 i told you that in sa 700 there are some special adjustments in audit report and you should be aware about these adjustment you should be well versed with these adjustments all right students in july 21 that asked one question listen to me in july 21 that asked one question that boss you are conducting audit of financial statements of x limited which is a company in company when you talk about financial statements as per company law company is supposed to prepare balance sheet pnl cash flow statement notes to accounts and statement of changes in equity these financial statements are required as per section 129 of companies act 2013 yes or no sir yes sir but let us say you are conducting audit of x limited and they have prepared one more extra financial statement and that is called as branch pnl you are like management what is this bro why separate branch pnl they are like <laughs> we just wanted to prepare it you know we were so excited with march end that we just wanted to prepare it so basically they have prepared a supplementary information sir what do you understand by supplementary information supplementary information means additional information which is not a part of the financial statements for example this branch pnl now if they present supplementary information along with the financial statements then as an auditor you will have to check whether that supplementary information is an integral part of the financial statements or not do you think that it is inseparable part of the financial statements do you think that it is very important part of the financial statements if you think so then you please cover it in audit opinion sir but how we will come to know about that in exams whether it is an in integral part of the financial statements or not sir it will depend upon question are in question they will give you the details if you look at july 21 question they had clearly said over there that auditor is not able to understand the requirement of this particular statement that means auditor is not convinced that it is an integral part right they will give you enough hints don't worry if it is an integral part of the financial statements then cover it in audit opinion however if it is not an integral part of the financial statements then do not cover it in audit opinion in fact you will ask management to present it in such a manner that it should not look like a part of the financial statements management should present such supplementary information in a manner which clearly differentiates it from the audited financial statements if they don't do that then we will write it in, then we will write it in our audit report that this supplementary information has not been covered by us in the audit opinion are you with me yes very special adjustment then listen to me let us say you are conducting audit of <coughs> an entity which is governed by west bengal government okay and the whole audit report format and everything has been given by didi i mean west bengal government then in that case you went through the audit report format you are like my god this full format is different from the format that we use in standards and auditing then in that case don't worry you can accept such audit but in the audit report they will not allow you to write ici says that don't write that audit was conducted in accordance with the standards on auditing i repeat second special adjustment law versus sa in audit report law versus sa in audit report i have written module over here so i will show it straight away from the module auditors report prescribed by law or regulation sir it is such a lengthy answer but listen summary is very simple that if there is a law versus sa situation all right and 
law if it does not cover the following paragraphs in audit report then you are not allowed to use essay reference in audit report one more time if there is a law versus essay situation there are 13 points that ici has given they are like if these 13 points are getting covered in the audit report which is given by law then you can write reference of essay but if these 13 points are not getting covered if even a single point out of these 13 is not getting covered then you cannot write reference of essay in the audit report i want a confirmation are you with me yes sir yes sir yes sir sir but are we supposed to by heart these 13 points no this is audit report format only so in short in simple words if you are not following the audit report format of the icai then icai will not allow you to write reference of essays in the audit report are you getting my point yes sir all right similarly there is one more adjustment international standards plus indian standards again this also straight away from the module sir can you give example listen to me let us uh, you know that mumbai ahmedabad bullet train venture right it is a joint venture of indian government and japanese government all right so let us say for that mumbai ahmedabad bullet train venture you are auditing the financial statements of that particular venture so over there you will have to follow indian standards in auditing as well as japanese standards in auditing so you are going to follow two essays for that particular audit my question to you is that in the audit report can we write reference to both the essays that essays as per the icai and essays as per japanese jurisdiction have been followed while conducting audit institute says you can write the reference of both the standards in the same audit report provided provided it should cover these 13 points so my request is that these 13 points just read it once all right and there should be no conflict in emphasis of matter other matter opinion basically whatever concepts we have studied in the audit report format <coughs> if the same concepts are followed in international jurisdiction also then you can write a reference of both essays as per the ici as well as international standards i want a confirmation are you through with this yes or no sir yes sir and then you can just read once immediately after the lecture is over so that you feel better all right now last adjustment changes in audit report due to disclaimer of an opinion i told you i will cover it as a part of special adjustments now this can be really sensitive for exams when you give a disclaimer of an opinion what are the final set of changes in the whole audit report when you give a disclaimer of an opinion first of all in the introduction we write this no we have audited financial statements of so and so company instead of we have audited you will have to use the english we have been engaged to audit because actually we could not audit so how can we use the english we have audited so in the introduction part one line will change then in the opinion part entire opinion will change we are unable to form an opinion on the financial statements whether such financial statements show a true and fair view of the state of affairs and stuff then listen to me in basis for opinion normally there are five points normally reference to essays reference to auditor's responsibility paragraph reference to code of ethics then we say that evidence available is sufficient and appropriate and we give reasons for modifying the opinion out of these five points two points will be eliminated which two points reference to auditor's responsibility paragraph will be omitted and this particular line that evidence available with us is sufficient and appropriate will also be omitted then key audit matters will be completely removed because you have given disclaimer of an opinion so there cannot be any key audit matter and then the major change is that in the auditor's responsibility paragraph normally there are nine points instead of those nine you will have to put only three points what are those three points first our responsibility is to conduct an audit of the financial statements and stuff as a 200 general line 
then we tell them that listen due to the reasons given in basis for disclaimer of an opinion we were not able to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and therefore we were not able to fulfill our responsibility but that does not mean that we are corrupt we have complied with our ethical requirements so these three points will be included in audit responsibility and the entire set of nine points will be substituted by these three points only so when you are giving a disclaimer of an opinion in auditor's responsibility paragraph you will have only these three points all right all right all right so that marks the end of the discussion of ss 700 to ss 706 but as a student what you're supposed to do now because you are very fresh with this whatever a set of notes you have you have my book you have some other professor's book every book is respected all right whatever set of notes you have go through it very quickly all right then go to the module from the module look at the drafting all right of all the paragraphs the drafting and solve the module questions if you are done with this you are done and dusted don't worry 700 to 706 i think you should feel motivated to finish it off within the next hour or so with your self-study also thank you so much